Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled and action-packed, intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist and snappy dresser, DT from Weather Risk, your commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, and your friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. Okay, I made the last part up. I'm not actually Peter Parker, but I could be. Anyway, let's get right to it. Lots to talk about here in this week of weather. Very wet pattern coming up here for another two weeks. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, he, of course, here you can uh, how to reach me through the horizon. And uh, you can also uh, my Twitter account here and also uh, weather risk. And then, of course, the Gmail if you want to reach me that way. All right, here we go. This is... Um, the satellite picture this afternoon, you can see the remains of the big storm yesterday. And of course, there are some important features. Again, I continue to see these pathetically stupid weather weenies going about telling people yesterday was a tropical storm or a hybrid. It was not at all. Just because you get a coastal low on the coast in July doesn't make it a tropical storm. Yes, it could even get windy. Was it unusual? Yes, it was. Was it tropical? No, it was not. And if you look at the phase diagrams, you'll see this system was almost completely uh, warm, uh, cold core is not warm core at all. Anyway, uh, let's get right to the satellite picture here. We'll take a look at this and the uh, satellite picture. And this here is the uh, plume of moisture being pulled up. So here's your upper low over and over and here. And what's happening is getting the moisture being pulled up this way. So you have a big ridge of high pressure here. So the interaction between the air high here is forcing the moisture up in this direction. So that's what's going on basically on satellite picture. Very uncomplicated pattern when you think about it. Rainfall yesterday. This is pretty darn impressive in case you did not see. This is 24 hours ending as of 8 a.m. this morning. So there's been some additional rain since then. But just for yesterday, you can see where the rain was. And again, very to sharp cutoff. I tried to mention this, you know, when I was doing the daily DTs all last week about the sharp cutoff. So, for example, if you were in uh, Charlottesville, which is this red dot right there, you didn't see bupkis. But uh, if you look at the you know, purple area, you see that purple area? That's six to eight inches of rain in here, uh, just outside of D.C., up by Dulles, uh, and so on and so forth. Richmond, right on the edge, depending on where you were, uh, Richmond to the east had two, three, four inches of rain. To the west, one to two inches. And once you got up by Farmville, nothing. Again, uh, Stanton was nothing going on there. Again, heavy rains, uh, moderately good rains, one to two, one to three inches in Hampton Roads, and up across the Delmarva. And again, this is just for... That area, remember, additional rains continue to fall up in this area, but did not do, but that did not cover the last two days. So I may do that in a later update. I may post that image later on. All right, more detail, high resolution. This is, again, just from the DC, the folks at Sterling. Really good graphic. I checked to see if uh, Wakefield had a graphic like this. Of course, they do not. What, what else is new? So, but you can see the very impressive rainfall amounts in some areas. Up by Germantown, over seven, almost seven and a half inches of rain in some areas. Okay, uh, let's go on. Uh, this here image is interesting. This shows the total rainfall uh, up to the up to January, July 21st, up to July 22nd, I should say. Um, and again, this uses all sorts of uh, METAR and, and, and uh, the the ACES uh, the data points every three to six hours. This is total for the month so far. Now, up to this point, up to July 21st, there wasn't a lot of rain which fell. So as you can see, there's been some significant rain now. Uh, the areas by Ellicott City, Baltimore, that has been up with almost nine inches of rain in the of total for the month because they did get some rain earlier. But you can see southwest Virginia uh, not seeing a lot of rain in the last month in North Carolina either. But in this whole area, very impressive rainfall totals. No doubt about that. All right, let's go on and take a look at the radar. This is the latest radar here. As of uh, this afternoon, you can see some showers and storms north of Richmond, east of Fredericksburg, into Tappahannock area in southern Maryland. And the uh, NAM was indicating that happening. This was the upper air map. Uh, as you can see this uh, afternoon, you can see clearly the big upper low, the trough upper low is right in here. As you can see, there's your low. Here's your heat dome over here. You can see that. Oops. The heat dome is right there. And of course, this here actually is a giant trough in this area right here. And the other feature is this is the dome out in the north. Well, there's your Bermuda High, the Northwest Atlantic Ocean. So what's happening is this feature is being driven inland. Um, it's driving, trying to drive inland. And what it does is that's causing these cold fronts to stall right along here. Now, so as long as that Bermuda High is there, the trough's not going anywhere. This here is the... Uh, uh, Nam from this morning, you can see the afternoon had the rain showers east of, east of Richmond, heading towards Hampton Roads. But actually, the storms are mostly, as you, as you just saw, 
from the uh, radar from the um, I should say from the uh, radar image you can see the storms are actually to the north of that anyway all right so that was the NAM this here is the NAM for tomorrow morning now notice not not a whole lot of additional rain has fallen we're seeing an increase here in storms in this area as the upper low is coming in the upper low is dropping down this way you can see but mostly this is unchanged from what it was uh, this afternoon this evening now the real activity resumes uh, on a Monday afternoon, a Monday evening, and Tuesday. And we can see that by taking a look at the total precip for Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. And again, you can see huge amounts of precip. See these little blue areas in here? Uh, let me get my mark out so you can see it. You see the little blue areas right in here and here? That's uh, seven, eight inches of rain in some areas. The dark red is four or five inches. What's happening is all the moisture is going up like this. All of it's going up like this. Notice not that much here. But it's all going this direction. Charlottesville's right on the edge. Lynchburg, they may see some wraparound moisture here, but most of the heavy stream is going south to north. And there's a reason for that. We'll get into that in a second. Okay. Um, and this here is the reason. There you go. 48 hours is the upper air pattern Tuesday morning. And again, there is there's your dome, very pronounced. One heat dome here. The other one is here. And the front is stalled. And we're getting the moisture flowing up in this direction between these two features. Here's your trough. And there's the moisture coming up. It's got no place to go. And it's very impressive. It's, it's you know, if anything, the weather models might be underdone. Let's take a look at this in high resolution. Now, this here is the NAM. And we can see this is a, a Monday morning at uh, 10 a.m. We can see one vorticity max right there. You see the vorticity? The little orange uh, spokes in here. See this area in here? See that? So you can see, oops, should be get the mark over there. You can see the connection there. Okay, so you're going to see more of these blobs coming up over the next uh, few, next uh, couple of maps here. Okay, this is now uh, Monday night at 11 p.m. And we can see another blob of moisture coming in this direction right here. coming Just following the flow straight up. And then this is a Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. And we can see the next blob of moisture. I have vorticity coming right up in here. See that energy? So it's just feeding the moisture up in this way. Little blobs of vorticity causing the showers and thunderstorms to develop. 25, 30 points vorticity in here. Very, very impressive. Okay. And, of course, it's just it's just feeding itself over. It's not going anywhere. So, for example, this here is the uh, uh, European model, 54 hours. You can see the rainfall plumes. And notice how it matches kind of the um, NAM. See that? Pretty darn impressive. Pretty good agreement here. Now, the European has the moisture plumes a little further more inland. Notice not that much here in eastern and southeast Virginia and the Delmarva. Most of it's inland from Richmond over towards Lynchburg and coming up in this direction. So it's, that might be correct. It might be close to the coast. So we just have to wait and see what uh, the next model one is showing here. Uh, this here is for Wednesday morning, uh, 72 hours. Now you can see the moisture beginning to shift back to the coast a little bit. And then uh, 18 hours, this, excuse me, this here is uh, 78 hours. You can see the whole system here. So the front, if we were to draw the front in, the front is running something like this. All right. So it's just not moving very much. Now, this is the upper air map here for uh, 96 hours for Thursday. Now, what's happening is we have another trough coming in right here. See this piece right here? And here's the trough axis coming in this direction. Okay, but we still have this one right here. So this is going to get kicked out a little bit, and this one's going to swing down. But the Bermuda High is not going anywhere, so that's going to present another problem down the road. So this is the uh, uh, European total rainfall for the next five days. Very impressive. You can see the, the blue areas, five or six inch rains, cl very clear about that. And uh, you can see 132 hours out, the trough is now re-energized. A new piece of energy is here. And the Bermuda highs and pushed a little bit. So we get a break here Thursday into Friday. It looks like the cold front finally gets pushed off the coast. Oops. Gets pushed off the coast enough so things dry out in this direction. And we can see that here a little bit in the surface map uh, for Friday evening. You see the front is pushed on through. Finally getting some dry weather here. You can see that. Oops. You can see the, the front's finally pushed through right through here. Okay, so it looks like the big rains has come to an end. Finally, Thursday into Friday. Now, this is the GFS uh, next uh, in the 6 to 10 day. And again, again, it rebuilds the precipitation significantly, running along next stalled front. And the reason for that is because 
eventually that fund's going to stall. So anyway, we get to that. That's a six to ten day. This is the European six to ten day. The front, the next round of precip is a little slower um, on the European. You can see it here as opposed to let's say on the uh, Euro, on the GFS where it's more widespread. But it's the same general idea. Now here, 192 hours out, we can see the next trough coming in. This is July 30th, so eight days out. Now I realize this is really far out in time, but there's a trough coming in here. There's the next one in here. So uh, what's going to happen? Are these troughs going to fly off the coast or are they going to stall? That's the next issue. And the problem is you can see the models slow the front down. Uh, this is a Thursday. You can see uh, July 30th. Where is our low pressure area? Right here. And the front is going like this and it's like this. And we have a little high right here. But this is another wet pattern developing. No doubt about it. You'll see why in one second. Okay. Day 10, the European Ensemble. There's your Bermuda high. The front the, the Bermuda high is right here. You can, let me highlight that. You can see it. So the front is stalled right along the edge of the front like this. So a lot of cool air up in here, but they're still getting the flow up in this way. And sure enough, that's exactly what the data shows. The GFS is showing the same thing. There's the Bermuda high pushing towards Cape Hatteras, pushing towards uh, Cape Cod. Meanwhile, you have your deep trough over the Midwest. Right here. There it is, day 10, almost day 9, same sort of thing. Very similar this to this, this and this. Very similar model, strong model agreement. And there's the GFS, a day a 9, day 8, sorry, with the next front slowing down, bringing the rain to the mid-Atlantic, into Pennsylvania, into Kentucky, and Tennessee. Very similar to that. I mean, strikingly similar, very good model agreement. And if we go 11 to 15 day, it looks pretty wet on both the European and the GFS ensembles, no doubt about that. Finally, if we look at 8 to 12 day out there, we can see this massive trough on the GFS. And again, the Bermuda High is still here. I don't know if the front will finally clear August 3rd. It might. It just We don't know that yet. But this is a very deep trough for August. I mean, this is August, folks. Very deep troughs of the front might just be along this area. We'll see. I don't know if the front clears the coast or not yet. Now, long term, just to give you an idea of how much rain the GFS is showing, this is the operational GFS, the 18Z run, and you can see it's got 12 inches of rain in places like Roanoke, Charlottesville, DC, 11 inches, Richmond, almost nine inches, up into Pennsylvania, Allentown. You know, very impressive rain. Greens, uh, well, Winston Salem, same sort of thing, 13 inches of rain. Now, that is dependent upon this pattern setting up with the front stalling inland remember this is a this is an inland rain pattern here the front stalling like that not on the coast the Bermuda high is pushing it inland so and we're seeing that on all the models so if that is the case you could see rainfall that high don't know if it's going to happen this might be overdone but it's a possibility anyway there's the uh this week in weather i'm your host meteorologist dt i'll see you on the facebook page and on the twitter page